We're live. Yep, it's up there. Okay. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's lunch, so I, you know, it's just after lunch, so I have to wake up people to make sure that they are paying attention. Okay, um, myself, Neela Shah, and this is Mark Vanderwin. We are both going to um, talk about the heat support that was added for um, Load Balancer as a Service version 2. Uh, this was added in Metaka. Um, Do a brief introduction. Um, I, I work at IBM, and um, this is my third summit here. Uh, Mark Vanderwin, I've worked at IBM for quite a while. Uh, many different things I've been working on. Uh, the heat and the LBAS was kind of cool. Um, I've been to many of the summits, so I've been involved. I'm also a contributor on various projects. I think I hit 29 for yeah. the number of projects I touched <laughs> in Metaka, so that was kind of cool. Okay, um, the things we are going to cover today, basically first we'll give you a little bit background about um, load balancer as a service that has been around in Newton, Neut gosh, Neutron and Newton, Neutron. Um, and then we'll talk about the heat support that was added in Metaka. We'll then cover a little bit about the Horizon dashboard support um, for LBAS version 2 because it's just a quick way of getting your load balancer created. Um, and then we'll go into the dev stack um, and, and how to go about uh, getting this support into your dev stack because it's not there by default. Um, then we'll talk about the heat templates, and then we'll cover a bit of considerations, especially if you have load balancer version one, or if you're considering using load balancer, then what are the things that you should think about? And then we'll wrap it up with any questions um, that you guys have. Okay, load balancing. We need it in various aspects of life. But we'll today focus on why it's needed on the data center. We don't want to overwhelm our systems, so load balancing becomes extremely important. So a little bit of the background. So load balancer as a service version one has been around in Neutron. But um, there's been some major uh, big problems with the design. It has a little bit of a fixed design. It's hard to make changes in the sense adding significant new features because the architecture doesn't allow for uh, pluggability. It does have scaling limitations as well. Um, so that's another issue. Um, so in Liberty, it was deprecated. So I know there is a lot of people out there that are using LPAS v1, but it is deprecated starting Liberty. Um, this LBAS v1 code is part of the Neutron code base, so there's no separate project that you need, so it's just all integrated into Neutron. So starting in the Kilo release, there was an experimental version 2 of LBAS that was introduced. It was marked experimental, and then uh, moving forward to Liberty, it was um, marked stable, so it was ready for production. Um, this has a completely redesigned approach. It has a a more pluggable architecture, so there are uh, different drivers um, that can uh, be plugged into this architecture. And it is a separate project, so if you are uh, looking for the code in Neutron, then it's not there. It's in the project called Neutron-LBAS. So that's the project where the LBAS v2 code resides. So the heat resources um, basically are mapping what is done for LBAS v2. And if you're familiar with V1, you'll notice that the structure is completely different than what you're used to in V1. So at the very top level, there is a load balancer. So in V1, there used to be a VIP, but in V1, V2, there is the load balancer on top. You can have a list of listeners associated with that load balancer. And then each listener can have a pool or more. And then each pool has a list of pool members. There's also a health monitor that's associated with the pool. So this is um, kind of the high level structure of the heat resources. And then we'll go into details of each of these resources and talk about um, how it's implemented in heat. So go ahead, Mark. 
Right, so the, the resources and heat are laid out. Um, like Neil was saying, this was a little bit of a challenge at first because there already are LBAS resources in the heat for V1. So now we have a head-on-head -head collision in the namespace. So we said we have to address that. We have to make it perfectly clear that V1 and V2 are black and white, completely different. They're not compatible, they're not interchangeable, they're not pluggable, they're separate. So keep that in mind. Draw a line between them. So the first uh, resource out there uh, that, that was in the namespace, so we, we, it, it was, uh, they, they already had OS Newton, so now, they, now we added the LBAS uh, 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 at the end of that one, and that, that solved the namespace issue. Um, so there's no, inter uh, no overlap or reuse. That's really important to know. The template version is, of course, the, uh, the Mataka release version of, of the templates. So if you have the, if you're gonna play with Mataka, you can, you can play with these heat resources. The other thing that was missing or lacking uh, that we added that was, I think it's a very nice thing to have, it cleans up your templates, is constraints. Uh, hopefully everybody knows what a constraint is. Basically it's the idea that if you have something in your template, as, instead of identifying it as a string or an identifier, no, 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 no. This is not an identifier. This is an LBAS load balancer ID. So it knows that ID. If you try to pass that around to something that has an LBAS constraint and it's not a load balancer ID, it'll kick it out. So it's a way to you know, value check or integrity check your templates. So there's constraints for almost every resource that, that, that it applies to. So I'm gonna walk through the resources here now. These are brand new resources, right? So you will see a load balancer for the old, or, or uh, um, the old, some of these names refer to some of the old ones, but these are all new resources in heat. So the first one, of course, like, she, like Neela mentioned, <coughs> is the high level load balancer, right? A completely new object. This is basically the, the high level piece, right, that's gonna direct your traffic, right? It has a virtual IP that can be assigned either initially or later on, and it can also be updated. It also has a template constraint. So that's your high level piece. That's where everything else is gonna fall off of that, all right? So when you build your load balancer, the first thing you have to build or you, you wanna go after is your load balancer. The next thing is what ports are you gonna listen for this load balancer? So you have listeners. Listeners is basically just a, a port uh, listing out there with some type of protocol. You notice also some of the protocols here have changed a little bit. They've added the HTTPS and the terminated HTTP. So you can have uh, an SSL endpoints in there as well. And of course, this one also has a constraint and you, you'll see the constraints in my template example later on. So the next one, they, they, which is very similar to V1, is pools. Everybody likes to be in the pool. It's a great day for being in a pool, I think. So pools is a group of servers. The key to, um, some of the keys to note here is that the, uh, it, it's, it defines by a subnet of the pools, right? So you're gonna send traffic to this pool of servers. It also has a balance, right? So you have a pool of servers. How are you gonna pick which one in the pool is going to get the traffic? There's a bunch of algorithms you can pick from, and these will grow over time, but right now the, the basic ones are there. Obviously round robin, the least number of connections, and of course, base it on the source where it came from. And this one also has a constraint. Within the pool, you have members. Right, so there's servers in the, in the pool. And the server is opaque. It doesn't represent a Nova server. It doesn't represent a particular type of server. It's anything that you can point at that has an IP and port. Right, so if you have an IP address and a port, you can edit the pool. So if you created servers that are outside of OpenStack or out somewhere and you wanna try this out and you just wanna point to those servers, I don't wanna create new instances for the, you can point right to them and try it, okay? So let's keep key to keep in mind is that you can use Nova servers, but you don't have to. And last but not least is our health monitor. So when you have a pool of servers, somebody has to keep the tabs on the health of that thing. Is it up, are the servers up, are they down, are they available? So when you send traffic, it doesn't go to a dead server, right? So somebody has to keep track of that. A very flexible resource is the, is, is the, um, the health monitor. It's going to have the uh, the pieces related to it, again, the protocol. What, what, what is considered healthy for this server? Look at it from a TCP IP point of view. Is the TCP IP endpoint up, HTTP? Again, you can pick your protocol, which can be different than the protocol for the, for the load balancer itself and the listener. Um, you can also configure the type of requests and, and, and methods that come into it. So 
um, what do you consider for the health? Do I do a, just a simple rest and get call, or do I do, wanna, do I want to do an update call or a delete? What's what's your what's your really notion of health? And then, of course, the last thing is it has a lot of configuration to it to say, well, like I said, how do you consider health? Is it every five minutes I want to bang on my servers, make sure they're up, or I want to do it every ten seconds? I really want my servers to respond, and if they're not responding in you know sub-second times, I want to know about it right away. I'll let Neela cover the dashboard. Okay, so um, as I said, we did add um, support for creating the load balancer itself in the Horizon dashboard. Now remember, these are not creating the heat resources. We are creating the load balancer object itself. And we want to show this to you because it's just a quick way of getting your load balancer in place. So the things I want to point out here is under project, under network, there is a load balancers um, left navigation entry. Now, uh, this is again in a separate project, so if you're installing Destack, make sure you get that um, plugin and install it if you want to use it. Um, you know, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a list of load balancers here, and, you know, if you wanted to create a new one, there's an easy way of just creating a load balancer. When you get to the load balancer screen, basically you'll see that there are all these resources that we just talked about that you can specify on the UI. The good thing about this is basically any field that is ma marked with an asterisk is the required field. So it just gives you a quick way if you wanted to quickly create something. So for the load balancer itself, all you need to specify is a subnet. You could change the name, description if you wanted. Um, um, and then next we create a listener. And for the listener, you basically need to specify the protocol, you know, whether it's HTTP, uh, TCP, and then um, give it a port. For, for the uh, pool, basically you have to provide the method. So the method is basically the algorithm that Mark talked about. There's three of them. There's round robin, there's least connection, and uh, source IP. So you could, there's a drop down, you could just select one of that. And then the pool members. So this is where you can specify whether you want to use an existing NOVA instance or you want to specify an external member that will let you specify an IP address. So if you had NOVA instances, then they would show up here. And then you could just select and they would um, get added to this list. Otherwise, you could do an external member and that will allow you to um, add an external. Um, the next thing, the last thing we provide is the health monitor. So we basically fill in the required fields and, and that's it. You create a load balancer. So it's just a quick way of getting your load balancers created. Um. Okay, so you're gonna get back to your offices here on Monday, you're gonna say, I really wanna play with this because <laughs> she said it's deprecated. I'm in trouble, it's going away and yes, it's, L1 is, you know, V1 is going away, guys. So if you haven't started looking at V2, <laughs> all right, put it on your to-do list. So how to play with it with DevStack, right? Hopefully most of you guys are familiar with DevStack or set it up a few times or something similar to it. It has a pluggable way to add drivers. The original V1 was included with, with, with Neutron. Um, and so if you want to use V2, you're going to have to do something a little bit special. It's, it's fairly straightforward. It's a plugin. And of course, the project we mentioned is Neutron LBAS. So there's your, there's your project and you pull it in. You have to enable this service explicitly. The, the default for V1 is uh, Q-LBAS, and V2, they added the, the V1, or the, the, the version at the end of it. So make sure you put that in there, that will get, that'll enable the service, you're ready to go. The next thing is to consider with DevStack, if you're running on a Mac or something like this, and you're running with VirtualBox or something like that, something that does not natively easily support nested virtualization, you will want to switch to use the, the namespace service provider or the legacy driver instead of, instead of the default of Octavia. So by default, you'll get Octavia. And Octavia is a, it, it uses virtualization to support LBAS. So if you have nested virtualization on a machine that doesn't support it, it's going to take a long time to create a load balancer. We're talking 10 minutes. You use the legacy one, okay, you're talking about 10 seconds. So keep that in mind. If you're using VMware or something that supports the, the nested virtualization, go ahead and just use the default and don't even worry about this line. Okay, if you have questions about that, let me know. The next thing is if you, if you wanna play with the HTTPS support, the SSL support, 
it uses Barbican for the certificate enablements and to store your certificates and to have M4 use those. And last but not least, of course, you'll want to turn on the dashboard because then you don't have to use any command lines. You can just click on the dashboard on, in Horizon like Neela just showed you and you can play with it right with the GUI. The GUI is a separate, of course, separate project and separate plugin that you'll plug in here from the, from the Neutron dashboard website. So with this all here, you bring up your dev stack and now you have V2 running. You can you choose, choose certificates if you want to set those up as well as now you can go right to the dashboard and say, create, create a Nova instance to be, to be, to be one of my endpoints in my pool create a pool of one, and go ahead and build your load balancer, and then start shooting traffic at it and see what happens. So this way you can explore it pretty easily right in DevStack without too much of a hassle. Uh, just remember this piece here. If you think, wow, why is my load balancer failing or timing out? It takes, it's be probably because you installed Octavia on a system that doesn't support nested, nested virtualization, and that's going to perform rather lousy for you, all right? So just remember that. Uh, the namespace provider here, um, works just fine. It, it's like I said, the whole point of the LBAS V2 is to allow this flexibility. I can switch drivers with one line of code. Boom, I'm using a, a different LBAS driver, same API, same horizon, same everything else. So no, um, some of the heat um, pieces here that, that we worked on to, to go along with the heat resources are some examples that are going on out there. So the first example that we, that we slid in here is an actual full test. So this is an auto scaling test. You can go take a look at it and see how it works. Obviously it's specific for a gate test, right? A, a Jenkins or a, the infra gate test. So it runs inside the gate and it runs a heat auto scaling group to bring up a certain amount of servers. And then it goes ahead and creates some simple web servers within there, starts the servers, and then it builds up a, a load balancer upon that. Then it, based on salometer information, it scales up and scales down your number of pools and your servers and watches the load balancer automatically scale up and scale down along with your servers. That's the cool thing about the heat resources. They will scale in proportion to your, your auto scaling group. So your, your scaling group gets 10 new servers. Those 10 new servers automatically get added to your load balancing pool and now you're ready to go with 10 servers, scale down the same way. So that's kind of slick how that is all pinned together. The other example that we put together is much more of a, I just want to play with this once. I don't understand this whole scaling thing. I don't really care right now. I just show me what this new stuff is, how to use it, and make it as simple as possible just to try. So I decided to create this one here. It's very simplistic. It's probably overly simplistic, but it shows you how to create a complete load balancer. And I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you real quick here. I have it up oh, right past it. Oh, I gotta shift, shift screens. There we go. I'll just start at the, by one at the bottom and go to the top here. So this is an all-in-one template. So all you have to do is look at one file, guys, and you can try to understand the concepts here for LBSV2 and heat and resource templates. So ooh, that's kind of small, isn't it? Where's my, well, I don't know how to make it bigger here. Oh, sorry about that. I'm going to make that one bigger real quick. But basically the idea is this, this comes in with, with all your information. All those inputs I talked about that you have to supply come in here, your basic template parameters that come in. And when you go down to the bottom, the basic resources are fairly simplistic here. So we have a group. This is your basic uh, neutron security group to build the VMs. And then I, like I said, this is not the right way to do it in heat, but it's for a very simple one line example. I put two servers right in line. So the server A, or server one, server two, right right there, and, and the little, then I throw them right into the pool right away. So then you can see down here, I, there's the other pool member. Then I create the other, other resources, which are really straightforward. You see that's, that's really it right there. That's the entire thing, guys, to bring the whole thing up. So that's your heat, re so there's a listener that will go against the load balancer in the pool. It points to its, it points to its protocol. And then you have the load balancer itself, you have, and then you have a flow IP to, to attach to the pool. So you have your, your, your um, external, external entry point. And the end of this template, it kind of lets you, shows you what the, what the port is that you're gonna go after your load balancer with. So a very simple one page example to get that going. Uh, hopefully that helps some folks out. Um, it, it helped me out writing it just to make sure we, you know, get the, get the stuff right there. All right. So I'm thinking here. 
So now we talk about considerations a little bit. As Neela mentioned, um, there are some you know, major differences between V1 and V2. Um, the cool thing about V2 is that it is a growing community. The Octavia Group, of course, is the, is the um, uh, I'll talk about that in a second here, is the, the de facto implementation of this, right? And they're a good bunch of guys. They're doing a lot of hard work to make all your dreams come true for load balancing. But, of course, we need options in, 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 in OpenStack, and there's a bunch of other drivers that are already there. They're done, they're in there, right? They're in the code, they're, they're, they're in that new project, the uh, Neutron LBAS project. So lots of different options here, and flexibility is the key here with plugins. With Octavia, some of the cool things they've been working on that they just, uh, just kind of put out besides the basic load balancer that we kind of know and love, I have a pool I can send IP traffic to different pools, is now they're adding L7. L7 is context-based routing. So when a request comes in and it's HTTP slash something something API, let's say, you can say, I want all those API requests to go to this pool. And I want all the requests that go to customer service to go to this pool. So you can dynamically control which direction that these requests go to and have it load balance at the same time. Uh, pool sharing is basically tied into the, the, the policies and rules you define from L7 to go into uh, which pool. So you can actually create a pool out there. It's not even associated with a load balancer. But because it's tied to a, a, a rule, it will send the traffic to that, to that pool for you. The other cool thing that they've been working on, and they, you know, they heard it loud and clear, you have to have better HA. And they've started on that. So they have active standby. Of course, that means active affinity, right? So you, you put two of these instances of the, of the load balancer piece on two different uh, uh, nodes and, 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 and have your active standby. One will automatically switch over when a failure occurs. Certificate uh, rotation uh, is talking more about the, the internal certificates used uh, to communicate between the load balancer objects themselves. And in order to be compliant with some government regulations, you need to be able to rotate your certificates upon expiration. So that's, they added that in there. And something that's coming along that's not quite there yet, that's just about here, is uh, they've been, the patches are out there. It's, okay, you saw the tree of resources, right? A load balancer, a listener, a pool, a member, a health monitor. Who's gonna clean all this up? So they're creating a cascade delete that says, kill my load balancer, and it will trickle down through that. Now that's an API, obviously. Right now that's done automatically for you if you use the heat resources, right? That's the whole point of using heat, right guys, is heat cleans up after itself. And of course, the other one that people have been asking for is that, wow, I'd like to be able to have one API that says, just create me a, create me a load balancer, and it creates all the other objects for you. So that, that one's just about to go in as well. So they're trying to make this as easy and consumable as possible. In the future, they're looking at for, hopefully in Newton or, or beyond, active active for HA, which is really cool, as well as the, the container support for Amphora. Amphora is, like I mentioned, this Octavia uses virtualization to hold its load balancer engine, if you will, part of it. And part of that engine is called Amphora. They wanna move that right now, it runs in a, runs in a VM, they wanna containerize that. So lots of good stuff happening there. And the last thing to note is the OpenStack CLI, which I hope everybody's moving away from the native, the old legacy, the Keystone, Nova, and you know the CLIs and moving to the new OpenStack command line. The command line support is in progress. It's got a little ways to go, but it's in progress. So that's good news too that maybe by the end of Newton you'll have the, the brand new CLI there as well. So the, 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 the takeaway from this is that, yeah, there's a lot of activity going on here. If there's something you need from load balancing that you always shot your, you know, uh, always had to do a workaround for V1 or had to put something else in for V1, now's the time to get your requests into the Octavia team or one of these other teams to get your stuff done for V2. It's, they're at their most active peak, right? That's when you get your changes in. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, some things that you should know about. So um, from a heat resource perspective, um, as we mentioned, there is the load balancer and there's all these other resources that go under it. So if you look at Purely from a neutron standpoint, how these resources are handled. If you, let's say you're creating a listener to a load balancer, and then you're trying to, so it's basically the flow goes, you have a load balancer, and you're trying to create a listener. The listener gets created, but the load balancer goes in a pending update status, and you can't do anything more to that as far as um, changing its structure. So you couldn't add another listener while that processing is still going, meaning while it's still in the pending update status. 
and you know heat is a little different because heat's trying to do things in parallel to optimize things so the way heat has implemented this is basically we try to um, add the resources or make the changes that you've requested and uh, it's going to throw us an exception if it's in a pending uh, update uh, status and then we are going to give it some wait time and then try again so it's just a, a way to um, you know continue making progress without just aborting everything some other considerations we'll talk about here is migration and coexistence so um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I know there's a lot of people that are using LBAS V1 today, but you do need to move to V2, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. As you're thinking of moving to V2, obviously the first thing that comes to your mind is migrating, right, because you don't want to just uh, disrupt. So, I mean, really, it, there is no good story right now that um, is recommended for this approach. It's all manual. You manually uh, migrate your neutron objects because as we talked up front, the whole structure, the resources are completely different between V1 and V2. The APIs have been completely redesigned. So it's just something you want to consider as you're uh, planning your move to V2. And coexistence, again, you know, if you're trying to move, uh, it might be better for you to have one node that's running v V1 and another node that's running V2 rather than trying to commingle them and have them coexist. So LBAS V1, it's going, 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 gone. So, I mean, we cannot emphasize enough that you need to get off V1. There is nothing new happening in V1 and then nothing new that will come in V1. There's no new features that will come in V1 moving forward. It's been already deprecated um, since uh, a while, so we do want everyone to get off V1. And so you want to basically get to V2, make sure you plan ahead and plan well, because there are some gotchas that you'll have to work through as you move from V1 to V2. But it is a move for the better, because it has a, a more flexible design, uh, more options, like Mark said. You know, there's a lot of drivers to pick from and um, there's a lot more features coming. So uh, just keep in mind as you plan your stuff. Um, you know, Mark talked about the L7 support that Octavia has added. Um, I just want to uh, call attention to the fact that there isn't L7 support in heat today. Uh, what's been done in Mitaka is, is the base LBAS V2 support. The L7 support should be coming in a future time. So I think um, that's uh, all we had, and we will take questions. And uh, if you have a question, then please walk up to one of those mics um, so that everyone can hear your question. So thank you for the presentation. Uh, when you say migrate to V2, which um, OpenStack version is supported with V2? So I mean, I think we need to migrate OpenStack uh, that the whole thing, right? I don't think it works with ice house, something like that, right? So could you explain a little bit more, and specifically in Neutron, what is the impact part? Right, sure. So, um, like I said, it, in, the, in, in, in Neutron itself, right, it was, it was, it was born in, in Kilo, yes. and, and the API was opened up in, in Liberty yeah. for, so if you have Liberty, you can start playing with it at, yeah. at, at the Neutron level, right, at the API level. Um, if you want to play with, with heat resources and have a little more uh, structured fun with it, you need Mataka. Okay, so that's why I put up that dev stack slide. So you got no excuse. You, you can pop a uh, Mataka dev stack on on your de dev machine and play with it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And um, just to add to that, the the dashboard support we saw was also added in Mataka. So heat and horizon support was added in Mataka. Yep. I had a question about listeners. Can uh, you have more than one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So listeners are, are one of those resources. You can have you can have more than one. Um, and the normal case for that would be something like I'm listening on HTTP, which is port 80, and I'm listening on HTTPS, port 443, mm -hmm. right? So you'd have two listeners, same load balancer. And then the cool thing about that, once you have that, that notion of things like that, you can direct the traffic with the new L7 support, which is kind of cool. So when you think about yeah. the, the possibilities, and the, and the L7 support is really simple, guys. It's, it's, it's elegant in terms of that you can do anything you want with it now. So you have total control of where you're gonna route your request to. 
So you can create pools of servers and say, you know, hey, I, you know, these guys really need more attention than those guys, or ho however you want to set it up. It, you're, you're in full control of that. So the rules and policies for L7, I, 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 you can take a look at, at their blueprint and their specs. It's fairly straightforward, but it's basically regular expressions with that. Uh, yes. How rich is that? How, how can we go deeper and look at the health of, of a service? Right, so, so the health monitor right now, like you, like you saw, the health monitor is pretty much an object that's gonna go out there and, you know, and ping that IP port with whatever flavor you wanna ping it with, right? It could be an HTTP request, TCP request, and some, some flavor of that request. You have different options there. You also have options of how often it requests and how much time it, it should reply in. So that's kind of your configurations for the health monitor right now. Are you looking for something deeper than that? Yeah, I want to be able to, to see the content of a returned page, for example, and look for some results in that. I may have oh, okay. A, I may have an app that presents a health page, and I need some status before I'm ready to send traffic to that service. Oh, okay. It like does, it, you do have the ability to put the request type on there. So you can say HTTP, it's got to be HTTP get of this. And, 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 and if the get of server list is successful, then you're gonna, you, so, so you can go down to the request level. Yeah. I just don't know if you can do anything about interrogating the data that comes back. Yeah, you can do, do, the, do the very basic receive string that says, yep. So the basic stuff is there. I'm not sure if it goes any deeper with, with, with more than just, you can get your return codes and receive string and you can specify what type of request. Uh, for HTTPS support and SSL offload, uh, is Barbican certificate supported from the Heat template? Yes. Yep. You, yeah, Barbican has resources in Heat that you can create the resources in there. I'm not. I'm not familiar with it as much. I just know they're in there, so I'm not sure if it has full Barbican support or just some basic certificate types. Um, but but it does have support in there for Heat resources. And you can combine that with the uh, load balancer resources oh. in Heat. Yes, definitely. Yep. When planning and preparing for an OpenStack upgrade, which upgrade, uh, Juno to Kilo, Kilo to Liberty, Liberty to Mitaka, is the one where we should consider moving existing V2 users to the mature V, I'm uh, sorry, existing V1 users to the mature V2 infrastructure? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the sta stabilization of version two was um, done in Liberty. So at the very least, your destination should be Liberty. But if you, if you are trying to use any of the heat support, then you want to move to Metaka. So will Kilo V1 be supported post Liberty so that we can move our clients that are using heat to V2? Or are we gonna have the need to move through Liberty to Metaka so that we can maintain the same feature sets to our clients if v one's being deprecated in Liberty? So V1 exists today. But like I said, there is minimal work going on. Uh, in fact, um, they're going to start minus two on uh, patches that anyone puts out for V1 now. So you'll start seeing that too. Um, so the code will be there. Yes. The features will be there, but they won't be, they, they won't be removed, but they just won't be enhanced the in patch. The code is there in Mitaka, okay. but uh, they, uh, the uh, team is still deciding what to do in Newton, so they might delete the tree, I think the, that discussion is still ongoing. But it is for sure that there will not be any new work or even support, they will not fix um, bugs in V1 either. So it is very important that you all think about moving to V2 if you're already on V1. Well, and, and just a side note to that, besides thinking about it, give your feedback for migration and your other considerations. So the, the teams, Octavia and Neutron Elbath, hear that loud and clear yeah. that they need to have some focus on that to help you guys out. But if everybody you know, works together a little bit, we yeah. can figure this thing out. It's not gonna be a, somebody's gonna throw the switch and it's gonna work yeah. for you. So definitely get in the community if you're, if you're worried about migration yeah. considerations because we got everybody's gotta pull together in this one. And better yet, share. If you write scripts, then feel free to share with the community. Yeah. So if I wanna combine um, load balancing and, and auto scaling, at some point I need to either add new instances automatically or they, they drop out, how, how does that work? Um, the current example that I have there shows how to do it with the auto scaling group from Heat, which is plugged into Solometers, uh, watching the resource utilization of your servers. So it's a very simplistic case, it says, oh, my server is up at 80%, uh, go ahead and spawn off three more. 
and expand my pool by three, something like that. And oh, my server's idling, so go ahead and kick three out of there. So it's basically just done on, on, the, on the Solometer metrics today to, to, to yeah. grow your pool. How does that work with like the health check and you know, adding the, the new IP addresses to that, to that pool? I'm trying to. Yeah, that's all part of the heat resource. So um, the, the, the heat resources with AutoScaler will take, that, will take care of that for you. So as you have pool members and, and, you, and your pool members are part of that auto scaling group that goes up and down, they automatically get added to the, to the pool members. So that's the cool thing about using the heat resources. There's no command line or doing something else to add it to the pool. The heat resources know that, hey, I added a new member. It automatically becomes part of the load balancer. Okay, and then the load balancer knows to just start doing health checks. On exactly, it becomes part of the whole, the whole picture, yep. That's the whole flexibility of the new, the, the new V2 architecture. Anything else? Like I said, I'm gonna really encourage you guys to get on V2 as well as feedback about, about the migration considerations because it's gonna be a, a, I'll call it a bump in the road. Yes, and it definitely It's is. up to you guys to figure out how big that bump's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that the support's coming along for what we need. Now the question is we gotta put the glue code there to get there for the migration, so thank you. So here's the, some oh. references. Oh, some if references, you wanted yeah. um, them, otherwise, thanks for coming. Thank you.